There are so many parents out there who have a desire to implement Montessori at home. They go out and they do some research and then they get so overwhelmed and they get so confused and then they start thinking, I can't do this, it's just too late. It is way too late for me to start Montessori at home with my children. But this could not be further from the truth. The first thing you need to know is that Montessori is not about all the materials. Why? Because Montessori is a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's the way that we interact with our, with our children to help them in their developmental process. This needs to be the focus of our approach. And when we do things this way, that's when we realize that it is never too late. Now, before I go on and help you out, I want to ask you, is there something about Montessori that you have felt particularly overwhelmed about? Is there something you have found particularly challenging? Why don't you drop a note in the comments box and I can come back and answer your questions and help you out. Now, if you are one of those parents who's feeling so overwhelmed, the first thing I want you to do is to start to forget. Forget about the shelves, forget about the activities, forget about the presentations, just for a while. So if we're forgetting about all of this, then what should we focus on? Let me break it down and make it easy for you in five simple steps. Number one, your relationship with your child. Let's start to build a connection with our child that's based on respectful discipline at the forefront. I know there are many of you out there who are using timeouts, rewards, punishments to discipline your child. Now this could not be further than anything Montessori. We say things like, um, I don't like the way you behaved with your sister, go straight to your room, you have a timeout. Or if you tidy up your toys, I'm gonna to give you 10 minutes of extra iPad time or extra screen time. This style of discipline does not work. If we want to implement Montessori at home, this is one thing we have to change. And it's not too late to do that, is it? If we really want our children to benefit from a Montessori program and a Montessori experience, then our relationship must be based on understanding and respect for our child and building trust with each other. Number two, actual practical life activities. Practical life does not just mean the materials we put on the shelf, like spooning and pouring, but it actually involves the things that we do in our day-to-day -day life. Things like brushing our own teeth, learning to wash our hands, fixing a simple breakfast, cleaning up. It is never too late to get started with these simple activities at home with our children. Think about this. These are day-to-day -day things that we do every day to get by with life, isn't it? So it doesn't matter how old your child is, you can start them at any time to make a breakfast, to learn to pick out their clothes and put them on, to put on their shoes, to help you in wiping windows, polishing the mirrors in the house. When we are doing these day-to-day -day tasks, let's invite our child to join us in doing them. In fact, you will be so surprised because the little ones, the toddlers, they love to get involved in this. They want to be a part of it. It makes them feel grown up. It makes them feel a part of the family. It makes them feel valuable. It raises their self-esteem. And of course, it's building independence at the same time. Now remember, the key word here is invite the child. The child should never feel that they're being forced into doing this. They should want to do it with you. That's when it's going to be beneficial. That's when it's going to be enjoyable for them. So invite them and ask them, would they like to join you? Be humble in your approach. Also, don't expect your child to just be doing this independently. It's all about teamwork. For a long time, you're going to have to work alongside your children Doing these activities with them, it becomes a group project. We do things together. Keep in mind that you do not want to, though you're working together as a team, you do not want to take over a task from them because you feel they're not doing it right or constantly hover over them and keep correcting them and saying, you're not doing this right, you need to change that, you need to do it this way. They're going to be put off and they'll reject the activity completely.
Mistakes are good for children. Montessori teaches us that it is through our mistakes that we learn, that we improve, that we grow. So make it something fun that you're doing together. Number three, freedom of choice and independence. It is never too late to foster your child's independence and to empower them with the ability to make choices. Now, the first way that we want to look at independence is in terms of our home environment. Is my home set up in a way that facilitates my child's movement, that helps them to become more independent? Are they able to wash their hands by themselves? Are they able to help themselves to a snack or a drink? By making small changes in your home, like adding a stool in the bathroom or in the kitchen, by having a little cupboard that has snacks uh, that your child can reach for when they want to, by setting up a little table that has some bread, some butter, some safe knives that they can just fix a snack for themselves, by placing their clothes, their day-to-day -day clothes, on a shelf that is accessible to them, having hooks at their level. All of these things go a very long way in helping your child to feel more independent. Our children are capable of so much, so why don't we give them the opportunities to try it? Let them put on their own shoes. Let them dress themselves. Yes, I know that it takes a little bit more time, and most of the time, it is our own impatience that comes in the way of their learning process. But when we step back, and we allow them to master this task and attain that success, you will see their self-esteem will skyrocket. They will feel so good about themselves and that is absolutely invaluable, isn't it? So our job is to train them, show them how to do things, give them lots of time to practice and perfect themselves and in this way we are empowering them. Another way we can empower our children is by giving them choices. Now, choices doesn't mean that they, have, they can do anything they want at any time, but we offer them simple choices. We start by just making two simple choices to offer them. For example, we're going out, would you like to choose your red shirt or your blue shirt to wear tonight? We have dinner and I've got some potatoes and I've got some beans. Which one would you like to choose? As you see, the children are progressing and they're able to make simple choices like that. As they grow older, you can make the choices more open. So I know you have to take a shower. Would you like to take your shower before dinner or after dinner? This is when your children are getting older. These simple choices give children a feeling of control in their lives. Think back to your own life when you were growing up. Did anyone give you choices? Everything was decided for you, wasn't it? Did that give you any sense of control in your life? So don't you think this is something we can give our children? And do you think it's too late to start even today, no matter how old your child is? Number four, using nature as a teacher. The world around us has a treasure chest of lessons that we can offer our children. And it's never too late for us to step outside our homes and help our children learn from the environment around us. Now is a better time than any because our children are homeschooling. They have to school from home and they're deprived of being with their friends. They're, they don't have any materials, so it's a great time for us to use nature to teach them. Let me tell you a very interesting story. When Maria Montessori was exiled from Italy, at some point she went to India. And she was invited there to teach courses and talk about her methodology. But for some reason, she ended up going into exile there as well. And she had to spend a lot of time in the mountains, what we call hill stations in India. Now, she had no classroom. She had no children. She had no materials. And she was feeling worried that if I have nothing or no one to practice with, how is my method, how's my philosophy going to grow and spread? It really worried her. And that, at that time, what she decided to do was to go out into nature and use nature to learn and to grow and to teach. This is when she further developed her cultural studies area and further enhanced the cosmic plan. Now, 
Isn't that exactly what our children are going th going through, just like Maria Montessori? No classrooms, no materials, no equipment. So why not get out there and use nature? There are so many lessons from looking at the colors of leaves, from comparing sizes, from studying life cycles of insects that they're intrigued about. It's never ending. You can just keep going and going. Maria Montessori knew that children have a very instant connection with nature and it's our responsibility as parents to keep that strong and to keep that growing. As an added bonus, when you're outdoors, it helps your child to satisfy their need for movement. They need, little children need a lot of movement. They want to jump, they want to climb, they want to skip. Once we get outdoors, out, uh, these needs will be satisfied. Number five, the parent as an observer. This is something I always tell my students year after year after year, that observation is one of the greatest tools you will develop as a Montessori educator. It's more valuable than knowing all your presentations or any activities because what you learn from carefully observing your child will give you invaluable tools in helping them to grow and to develop and to become into the person that they are meant to be. Remember, Montessori tells us that we're here to follow the child. Now, if I truly want to follow the child, I can only do that if I know what their interests are, what excites them, what makes them happy, what frustrates them. That is when I will be able to cater to that child and give him what he needs, right? These observations are going to be the keys for me to help my child. And as they grow and I continue to observe them, I'm going to be able to learn what they are passionate about in life. Now, when you look back at these five simple points that I've given you, do you really think it's too late to get started with Montessori? Not at all, right? These are easy things to implement right away. Now, here's what I want to add. You do not have to implement everything at one time. Start with what feels most comfortable for you. There's no order. You don't have to start at number one and end at number five. Pick the easiest one for you right now. Work on that, feel confident with it, feel like, you know, I've really got this covered and then choose another one and work on that one. And in this way, bit by bit, you'll be able to implement Montessori at home. It's all about taking it at your pace, what is comfortable for you. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed and then as a result, you're going to pass that on and overwhelm your child. And when you feel that you've mastered these five tips, the next step for you is to set up a shelf. And we have a video about that, starting with just one shelf. I'm going to link that in the description below so that you can watch that and continue on your Montessori journey. As you're learning and growing in the Montessori world, keep coming back to watch our videos. We have a lot of tips to help you, to empower you, to make you feel confident as a Montessori parent or teacher. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so you get notifications and you don't miss a single video. I can't wait for you to get started. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.